Number 50, Fairest Floor Jesus. Do you know that? 1 to 3. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. In Luke 4, 17 to 21, Jesus quoted these verses, and he said, today, these are fulfilled in your hearing. Just like Isaiah was anointed by God's Spirit to proclaim freedom to the captives of Israel, even in their captivity, so Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit yes. to proclaim a greater permanent freedom yes. to a lost world Amen. through his sacrificial life and victorious death. Like most Old Testament prophecies, these words have uh, double fulfillment. Yes. Uh -huh. 
a temporary one to prove God keeps his promise so we can believe in him mm -hmm. and a permanent complete fulfillment in Jesus Christ yes. Amen. remember God is good all the time and all the time God is good Yes, the same God of the Jews in the Old Testament is the God of Jesus yes, in the New. Amen. Note that Jesus said he was a preacher yes, of a good news. Mm -hmm. Note also that Jesus was sent to the meek, he said, mm -hmm. to the repentant sinners, mm -hmm. to the poor in spirit and broken hearted, mm -hmm. to those who are captive to vices bound by Satan's deception. Mm -hmm. To those who have no way out except if God intervenes. Yeah. Note that Jesus is also our healer and our deliverer. Yes. Amen. Jesus became a prophet to preach, a priest to intercede, a king to proclaim the good news, yeah. a healer to heal, and a deliverer to save us. Amen. We are bound by our sin to the captivity of Satan and to death. But Jesus destroyed him who had the power of sin and death. Jesus, if, Jesus is willing, if we are willing, to make us free by his spirit, to, free to do all that he sends us to do, and free to be together with him forever. In Mark 16, it says, Go forth into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Those who uh, believe and are baptized will be saved, yes. but those who do not believe will be condemned. Amen. Uh, Jesus gave us the same commission that God gave him. Mm -hmm. He said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. Amen. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, like Isaiah said. Amen. And the acceptable year of the Lord is right now Amen. to each one of us who hear about Jesus. Amen. Uh, the name of God is I am. Mm -hmm. Too often we live in past and present uh, and future. And with God, it's always present. Amen. Yes. Amen. And to us as Christian, the acceptable year, the acceptable minute, and the acceptable hour is right now. Amen. Amen. We live in the present with the great I am. There's salvation and power for those who believe in Jesus. Yes. But there's also vengeance and condemnation right. to those who reject him. Amen. He, he said, uh, those who do not believe it will be condemned. Mm -hmm. Isaiah says, and the day of the vengeance of our God. Mm -hmm. The God of mercy is also the God of vengeance. Yes, that's right. And that's a comfort. Yes, it is. Amen. Because we see so much injustice and everybody getting away with stuff mm -hmm. here on earth. And they never seem to, mm -hmm. they seem to get away with it till they die and mm -hmm. they're you know, flying high on a kite. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's not the end of things. That's right. Amen. That God gives justice. Amen. Amen. Jesus comforts those who mourn. Mm -hmm. He gives beauty for our ashes. That's right. Joy for our sorrows. Mm -hmm. He, instead of despair, he brings praise. Mm -hmm. And he, clothes of righteousness instead of our imperfections. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That, my dear brethren, is a good exchange. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. This week, uh, my stepdaughter was riding a bicycle to work and ran in, head on into a semi. And she ended up alive by the grace of God. Yeah. The semi driver was a black man that turned white from fright and was coming out shaking. <laughs> she wasn't even shook. She was just skinned up. Mm -hmm. And it had to be the angels, uh, yeah, the guardian yeah. angels yeah. sitting there around that stopped that semi. Yeah. It ran over the bicycle but missed her. Yeah. And it brings the protection and the love of God close to us. Mm 
when we have close encounters of the third kind. <laughs> and we want to thank God, Lord, for his blessings because we who belong to him can trust him. That's right. And he said, don't be afraid. I've got your back. Mm -hmm. Even when, even if the semi didn't stop, uh, I still have faith in God yes. because uh, we have faith in he who saves us. That's right. And let's pray. Oh, Lord God, I thank you very much for your promises. They're so great. Amen. We do have oil of joy. Amen. And we do have blessing instead of sorrow and beauty for ashes. Right. Your Lord, you keep your promises. And we thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you for our trials. Amen. We thank you for our difficulties because you've got a reason for every one of them and uh, you have planned it for our benefit and for our character and for our joy advance your kingdom lord and help us to live like jesus did and love the lord our god with all of our heart and soul and mind and our neighbor as ourselves amen. in jesus name amen, amen. Thank you, Same book. 
217. Page 217. Yes. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry, go right ahead. Number 122. Same book? Yes. Page number 122. 122. Yeah. Why? Good questions. Mm -hmm. Why? Why?
Mr. Linda? Page 113 in the same book. Page 113 in the same book. The Old Rugged Cross. Page 113. Notice the theme of the Yes. Page number 240 will be our last one this evening. Page 240. Oh, that wasn't it. Okay. What's the name of it? Same book. Same book. That wasn't the right one. He's looking. Yeah. Oh, 149. Okay, 149. <laughs> well, it was close. <laughs> it was in the same book. Yeah. <laughs> Page 149. 
when we see Christ. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to change when we see Christ. Amen. 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 selections. Now uh, Sister June will come with our time of prayer. Amen. Our first request <clears throat> comes from from the epistle of Luke, chapter 11, verses 34 and 35. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body is also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Mm -hmm. 
Now our basic theme is going to be things that we take heed of. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, we spoke some this morning to this particular issue, but Jesus made it a point to give a warning to take heed about the light that is in you. Uh -huh. yeah. there, is, there is a light that is not the light of God. Uh, it would be to natural light yeah. what uh, what manufactured or chemical light would be. It's it's light, yeah. but it doesn't lead to the light. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. It's it has corruption in it, That's right. and therefore it can't work the work of God. Hmm. Now, how exactly would a person take heed to the light that is in them? How do we know that the light that we are are navigating by is that one true light? Yeah, true. It's because God has put everything into a place that is easily identifiable for the saints. Yeah. We can look at Christ, who is the light. Mm -hmm. Just as the sun was set in our solar system to be the life-giving light, now, the earth couldn't live by the light of the moon. That's right. And it couldn't live by the light of the stars. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, they're not corrupted, right. but they're lesser lights. Yes. He put the sun for the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's where the life-giving light mm -hmm. for, for us comes from. There is, there is one source of that light, and it is Christ Jesus, who is the light of the world and who makes us to be lights in the world mm -hmm. because his light is in us and it we would be more like the moon yeah, yeah that's right amen yes so we're going to pray that uh the the people of god who are still sojourning in the earth would take heed and that god would give us discernment to know what light it is mm -hmm. that we are walking by. Amen. What light are we walking in? And what light is in us? Mm -hmm. So if we, we know that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will not stumble. Mm -hmm. See, there's a, he's given us proofs of these things. He's given us, um, He's given us means whereby we might examine ourselves. Right. If we're stumbling, we're not walking in the light. Mm -hmm. And so it's another. So if it is not doing the works of God, if it is not bearing the fruit of the Spirit, then it's not the light of, of God mm -hmm. that we're walking in. Mm -hmm. So we want that all of God's people yeah. would walk in the light and that our lights would shine before men. Yes, so that we might, in our works, might glorify our Father, yes. which is in heaven. Brother Given? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. Next, we're going to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. <clears throat> Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Yes. Be strong. Amen. That's a big order. Yes. What, th again, these admonitions are in here because we have need of them. That's right. The people of God are, now we're sensitive, we're caring, we can be merciful, we can be tender, but underneath that, underpinning that, these things that we watch to stand to to make sure that we're standing in the faith yeah. standing fast fast yeah. just like a something that's pinioned with a nail that's right. sure Amen. stand fast right. in Amen. the faith uh -huh. quit you like men yeah. now ladies we have to quit ourselves like men in the faith that's right. Yes. the qualities 
that a strong man exhibits are to be found in all the saints of God as it relates to the faith. Be strong. Now, we couldn't receive that unless we had a Savior who would make us to stand, who would make us to overcome. We have a reason that, to apply all of the strength that was that is in us to apprehend and to attain to the strength that comes to us by grace and in, in that Christ is ministering to his people. We can receive that admonition to be strong. The winds against us are strong. Yes. Remember Paul, he said, having done all to stand, no. stand. In other words, there may be times when it would be hard to push forward, but we can always stand. Whenever whatever's coming against us, we don't have to lose ground. We don't have to be pushed backwards. We can stand because he will make us to stand. So our confidence is in God and in Christ, who is our victory, who is our strength, who is our hope and our deliverer. So who will lead us in that? That the saints of God, and I, we pray for the for the uh, believers all over the earth because we all have needs. They're different in different places in the earth. Uh, Brother David, I'll, yes, I got you. And they have they have different needs, but the end is the same. Faith is being shown victorious in all the experiences and circumstances of life. In the judgment, we are going to see the superiority of faith to everything that could be thrown against it. Yes, amen. So, all right, Brother David and Sister Vanita, thank you very much. And uh, we pray that the that the saints will begin to, to realize the answers of our prayers, even though they may not even know that we've prayed this for them. But God, that we're praying these things according to the will of God. Mm -hmm. So our last request, it comes from uh, the second epistle of John in verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, yes. but that we receive a full reward. Mm, yes. God is a rewarder. Jesus said that uh, he would come and he would... Uh, uh, and that he would reward, he's a rewarder of them that have been faithful. Our works are going to follow us. In other words, we're not, there are a lot of things we're going to leave here, yes. but not the things we've wrought in Christ. Amen. Those are going to follow us. Yes. Those are going to actually be uh, multiplied and magnified on the other side. Everything here is going to look like a seed next to a, a, a redwood tree or even something larger, a pebble next to a mountain range in comparison. But we're being faithful in little now, and we are going to receive much. Yes. So we look to ourselves. Yeah. We guard those things that we've wrought yes. so that we don't lose any. Amen. And so Amen. that we receive a full yes. reward. Amen. So who will lead us in that? Who is interested in getting a full reward? <laughs> brother Robert and Sister Heather. All right. Thank you, brethren. Brother Maddox is going to, again, bring the, the uh, scripture text to us. And Maddox, I want to let you know, you did a really good job this morning. You read that scripture very well. We're, we're praying that that will continue with you. And then Brother David is going to bring our message from the Word of God. All right, let's pray for them. Our Holy Father in heaven, we thank you that you never tire yes. to hear us when we come to thee in prayer because of your Son Amen. and because of his work in us. Lord, we ask that you would be with Brother David this night. Mm -hmm. Ask, Father, that uh, you would give him the, the blessing of 
the the presence of your spirit with him as he he preaches the things that he's prepared we have confidence that you've guided him into his his subject for tonight and we pray that by your spirit he would be continually guided into the delivery of that truth we ask your blessing upon him that he would know your blessing upon him as he preaches and father we ask your blessing upon us as we hear these words of life yeah. that we love the things that thou hast revealed for us to know and we pray again for brother maddox thanking you again for his faithfulness in his service to thee and his his service to your brethren the congregation here as he uh, presents the word of the text to us this night Amen. now father we commit ourselves in this gathering and this time to thee in the name of christ with thanksgiving amen amen, amen. our heavenly father tonight we're asking for grace and strength to look to ourselves yes that the light that's in us is not darkness. Amen. We confess to you, Lord, that during these times there's a lot of artificial spiritual light. Mm -hmm. We uh, we don't want it, but we acknowledge that there have been times and we have discovered that we had a form of light that didn't render life. We thank thee, first of all, that you'll give us the power and the faith and wisdom to examine the light that we have. Plus the light we have is darkness. It doesn't produce life and doesn't cause us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Grant us grace to detect false light and to steer clear of it. Mm -hmm. Not to touch the unclean thing. Mm -hmm. Not to dwell around light that's not spiritual light it's not true light we thank thee first of all as you have told us that Jesus is the true light mm -hmm. yes. that's come into the world and that all legitimate moral and spiritual light exudes from Christ Jesus Satan is the arch foe of Jesus and of us as well so he is trying to manufacture a false light that looks as though it's the real thing but doesn't produce what's true. Mm -hmm. So we thank thee first of all for this warning. Look to yourselves. Yes. This is the Savior himself. Mm -hmm. he said, look to yourselves. Examine yourselves, the apostle said, to see if you be in the faith. Mm -hmm. We confess that we want the true light. We don't want the light in us to be darkness. Amen. Amen or something that hides the truth. There is a uh, religious spirit fostered by demons that produces no confidence, no power, no faith, but makes a person feel comfortable yeah. in the yeah. world. Yeah. We ask for this grace to see to it, look to ourselves. That the light that we have is legitimate light. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we're praying tonight for all the believers here at Worship Fellowship and for all the believers around the world who yes. are standing fast in your word. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask that you'd give us the ability to live by faith, mm -hmm. to watch out for temptation that's coming our way, to resist Satan. To flee away from sin. And Lord, the scripture says that we're to watch and wait for your appearing. So Lord, we ask that you to give us the ability to watch and not sleep. Yes. To not uh, get caught up with things that would be uh, unproductive or counterproductive to our faith. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask that you would give us the power of the Holy Spirit so we can stand in the gospel, stand for true doctrine, stand in the faith, and not not to quit believing when there's temptation all around it, to give up and lose hope. We ask that you'd give us this. Our determination is that we want to, we want to stand fast in the faith. Yes. 
And the only way we can do that is if you give us the strength to do it. Mm -hmm. So we depend on you. Lord, we ask you to give us the strength, your strength, to stand in this world that's attacking us and coming against anything that has to do with Jesus Christ or salvation or the Bible. Lord, we ask that you help us to proclaim your word mm -hmm. fearlessly. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Precious Jesus, you are the one that said that we are the light of the world. Yes. The city that mm -hmm. sat on a hill could not be hid. Yes. Amen. Help us to be strong, to fight up the flames of our faith, Lord, mm -hmm. and to put our, our lives on a hill where it cannot be hid and not yeah. hide yeah. them under the ground where yeah. yes. we are fear of, fearful of men. Yes. For what can man do to us? Yes. Amen. Lord, help us to be strong in Christ's promises. Amen. Yes. Because we have treasures laid up in heaven. Amen. And help us to put faith, Lord, in you and trust in you in our lives. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us to be strong in the faith and study the word of God so we can tell truth from falsehood. And help us to be faithful to the end. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight thanking you, Father, for such an abundant salvation. Father, that we can come to you and let our requests be made known. And Father, we know that, Father, you hear us. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, one that can know you, one that can lead us and, and show us and things that you have spoken and help us to understand it. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you you can enable us, that we can not lose the things you have worked in us. Yes, amen. Father, we, we desire, Lord, to hold on to them, to, to grasp them with a firm grasp, the Father, that we would understand them, uh, which is going to help us to not let them go, and Father, that we would be thankful to do the things that you've, you've shown us. Father, that we would not be weary and well-doing, but we would keep pressing in and not let go of these mighty things you've mm -hmm. you've you've shown us in your scriptures and by your son. Yes. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Our holy Father in heaven, we come before you to the throne of all grace, praying in unity tonight for all saints everywhere, for the wisdom to look to ourselves to guard the precious gifts we have obtained in Christ. Amen. Where we desire to obtain a full reward, mm -hmm. where we, we know your word has told us we have an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of you who worketh all things after the counsel of your own will. Yes. Lord, we ask for strength not to lose sight of this truth revealed in your word. Lord, we ask, empower us to grasp by faith and believe those who abide in the doctrine of Christ have both the Father and the Son. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother, Brother David's message will be on 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, faith, in purity. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I get, I pray that you'd give Brother David the word to speak, Lord, and 
that we would all be edified mm -hmm. and that it would be very nourishing, Lord. And I thank you for this wonderful day of edification. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good evening, brethren. Good evening. This is a great day. I want to say welcome to everyone who's joining us on live stream. Tonight I want to speak to uh, young people. I was, as, as if I was stepping into a time machine and going back to warn myself when I was a young person. And I, I'm uh, not young anymore. You may have noticed, but there are things that I wish I would have uh, done differently when I was young. You can't go back and change the past. Mm -hmm. All we have is now. But if anyone can learn from the scriptures and from the example of other people, that's a much better way than doing it than, yes. than running into all the pitfalls that if you don't listen to the scriptures. There was a a lady named Hannah who was barren and she prayed to the Lord and it was a, a miracle that the Lord allowed her to conceive and she had a baby and she named him Samuel mm -hmm. and when he was it says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 the child the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli and later the text goes on to recall that as a child he was in the tabernacle and he heard from God. God called to him and he gave him a wonderful prophecy. It was a terrible prophecy against Eli, but Eli had some wicked sons. Yeah, that's right. And Samuel was a child when he was serving the Lord in the tabernacle. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no limitation on how old you have to be to hear from the Lord. Amen. You can be a child and hear from the Lord. In uh, Second Chronicles 24, we read about the King Joash. And his, uh, I believe his grandmother was Athaliah, a wicked, mm -hmm. wicked queen who was very ungodly and uh, idolater. And we read in 2 Chronicles 24, verse 1, Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And verse 2, And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's a seven-year-old and yeah. with a lot of responsibility yeah. I and mean, in charge of the whole kingdom. Now, he did have the Jehoiada the priest to help him. Mm -hmm. And it says all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Well, Jehoiada ended up falling away from the Lord. And it could be the example caused Joash to change. But I'm telling you, a seven-year-old yeah. was the king. Yeah. So there's no limitation on uh, a young person can have responsibilities before God, big responsibilities. Yeah, that's right. We have the example of Josiah. Now, this is in Second yeah. Kings. Second Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old right. when he began to reign. That's right. He's eight years old. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Can you imagine all that responsibility on a young person? There's no limitation on what God can do with a person. Amen. They can be young or old or any age. Mm -hmm. If you're a young person and you're following the Lord, I urge you to follow the example of Samuel and Josiah and turn not aside from the Lord. There's godly people that have been put around and the scriptures tell us to follow their example. Yeah. 
Yes, amen. But also a young person can be an example to other people, too. We'll get to that later in the text. Let's turn to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now here we have, we don't know his exact age, but we'll just read what the text says. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Speaking of King David, there was a battle and there was a giant named Goliath who was nine feet six inches tall. And he was tall enough. That, now King Saul was head and shoulders taller than everybody else. But he was afraid of Goliath and the whole army was afraid of Goliath. No one would come out and challenge him. And we read in 1 Samuel 17 verse 14 out of David, out of his son, his father Jesse's sons, David was the youngest. Mm -hmm. So he has three older brothers, the oldest, who are in the army, and he sends them to bring him food and to bring back news of the war. Now, in verse... By the way, we read that David was an encouragement to King Saul. Now, Saul is supposed to be the king, but uh, David had to give him encouragement. In verse 32, David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. A young person can stand and fight against the forces of wickedness. Now here's what he got back. You would think that Saul would encourage him. But no, he said... Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Uh, here's a, a word I have to say to someone who would discourage a young person. Let no man despise thy youth. We have David, who's a young person. Yes. Well, how do you learn to be a warrior from your youth? You start when you're a youth, and then you become a warrior. Amen. Let's go on down to verse 42. Yes. Now, here's what Goliath, the giant, had to say about David. Yes. Verse 42, And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, yeah. for he was but a youth, yeah. and ready and of fair countess. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose he changed his tune. Well, he wasn't singing any tune after this because right. <laughs> you read further and yes. without a sword, yes. you have this giant with heavy, heavy armor. Uh -huh. And David just picked up some stones and he put them in a sling and God guided that stone. Right. So it hit him right in the forehead and it sunk in and killed him. Amen. And he cut his head off with Goliath's own sword. Yes. So let me tell you, a young person can come up against the forces of wickedness and win. Amen. Amen. That's right. There's no limitation Amen. on who God will use. Yes. Now, we've come into the kingdom as little children. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. That's where you start. But you don't stay there. Mm -hmm. You can grow. You can come to... There's nothing stopping anyone of any age to come to Christ. That's right. But a young person can come to Christ. You don't have to wait till you're old. Yes. And it's better if you don't wait until you're old. Right. We have the, now we come to, uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 16. And here we read about Paul on his journeys. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were in Lystra mm -hmm. and Iconium. And so Timothy became Paul's protege. Yeah. That's right. He became a disciple of Paul who was mm -hmm. uh, going around preaching, and I'm sure as a young person, Timothy was going around preaching. Mm -hmm. And how do you learn to preach if you got to start sometime? Why not start when you're young? Yes, yes. And I'm thankful for the opportunity here at Word of Truth Fellowship to let anyone who's filled with the Spirit of God to participate in the Amen. meetings. And, uh, yes. and so I want to speak to all the youth. In the last couple of years, there have been a number of young children who entered into the kingdom and yeah. were baptized into Christ. Mm -hmm. 
and made a profession of faith, this message is for all of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Let no man despise thy youth, Amen. but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Mm -hmm. Now that's a big, tall order. You can't do that on your own. You have to have, have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. And there's a lot of pitfalls on your way as you mm -hmm. grow up in Christ. You, there are enemies who want to steal your faith. Yeah. There are enemies who despise God. Mm -hmm. Enemies of God. Enemies of Jesus Christ. Enemies of the Word. Mm -hmm. And they will do everything in their power to get you to lose your faith and to deny Christ. Mm -hmm. But here's what I have to say. Let no man despise thy youth. That's right. Amen. Yes. You can be an example to other people as a young person. Now, we have people here in the fellowship and other people are, that we know that are uh, godly people, and we want to follow their faith and their example. Amen, that's right. But you know, as a young person, you can be an example for other people. They see the way you yeah. behave, the way you think, the way you act. You can be an example to other people. Now, we have a our ultimate example, now, <laughs> Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2. He was only 12, and he went with his parents on a, to a feast in Jerusalem. And he says, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 42, when he was 12 years old, yeah. they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Now, he stayed behind, and they went back, and they, had to, they lost him in the crowd, and they had to come back and find him, and there he was. Yes. Verse 46, it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, yes. both hearing them and asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they were... When they saw him, they were amazed. As a 12-year-old, Jesus was sitting in amongst the people, yeah. Yeah. the people with all the professional education in the Word of God, and listening to them and asking questions. And they were astonished at his understanding. He knew more than the teachers at the age of 12. Now, I give to you that, of course... He was also the Son of God, both God and man. But it also says in Philippians 2 that he stripped himself of all yeah. the rights and prerogatives of God. That's right. now, this is a totally different topic, but I don't understand uh, two separate, both God and man, mm -hmm. in one person. My mind can't comprehend that, and I'm going to have to accept it by faith until I can explain it to you. I can't explain it. I'm just telling you, at the age of 12, yeah. Jesus had understanding that was superior yes. to all the elders of Israel, all the learned yeah. people yeah. who had been to all the rabbinical schools mm -hmm. and studied mm -hmm. the text from... And he knew more than them. Yeah. As a young person... You can know more than the teachers. Yes. He hasn't even been anointed yet. Yes. He hasn't even been anointed yet. Amen. Now, there are schools that are set up to teach you yeah. knowledge. Yeah. 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 As a young person, you can know more than the professors in those yeah. colleges. That's right. Amen. The key is yes. to follow after the spirit and not after the flesh. Most education is designed for the flesh. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's carnal in nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does not seek after God, he doesn't know God, and you come out of a educational system that's supposed to teach you about God, and you end up needing to know about God. Yeah. It's not true of every person or every uh, professor, I'm, I hope. But let me tell you, as a young person, with the Word of God yeah. and the Spirit of God, uh -huh. you can know more than your teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, with Christ's example is in Luke chapter 2, verse 51 and 52. Yeah. Speaking of Jesus, 
when he went down with them, he came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That's our example. As a young person, he was in subjection to his parents. That's right. Amen. We're also taught in the scriptures to honor our parents. Now, this has uh, been on my heart. Uh, as a child, I was rebellious to my parents, but I kept it inside. I mean, I was obedient on the outside and rebellious on the inside. And I urge anyone who's a young person, if you're going to be obedient to your parents, be obedient in your spirit also, not just in your body. Yeah. Yes. It will cause you a great deal of grief mm -hmm. if you just pretend to obey and then follow your own thoughts and your own desires on the inside and and then as soon as you get away from your parents then you'll just do whatever you want mm -hmm. the the admonition in the scripture is for the the fathers mm -hmm. to talk with their children as they sit down at the table as they travel as they come back as they're getting up laying down wherever you go the fathers are to teach the children yes. the children listen to your father Amen. and they have their best interests yes. for you in exodus 20 verse 12 honor thy father yes. and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land of which the lord thy god giveth thee deuteronomy 5 16 honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Hmm. Jesus also taught the same. Yes. There's five or six different verses where Jesus affirmed mm -hmm. to honor our father and mother. This part of the part of the Ten Commandments. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Mm -hmm. Honor thy father and mother. That's right. Well, we see that Jesus was, that's the example that Jesus gave, honoring his father and mother. Amen. And Paul repeated it in Ephesians 6, 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is first. the first commandment with a promise. The other, prom, other commandments didn't have a promise. That one did. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And, ye fathers, yeah. provoke not your children to wrath, right. but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Young people, your parents, their purpose in life is to bring you up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They want to see you raised right. They want you to know God. They want you to have all the blessings of the gospel. And that's what, that's the way that God has ordained for the parents to teach the young people. The young people, listen to your parents and obey them. Mm -hmm. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Yes, amen. And fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. I want to be pleasing to the Lord. Now, my parents are old. Uh, some of you may have parents that have passed on. Some may have parents that are still with us. But the children end up growing up to be the adults, and then they have a new generation of children. Yeah. Well, from one generation to the next generation, and it continues, we want to serve the Lord and to know the Lord and to obey Him in all things. Yeah. And that's the pattern is to fathers, to teach the children, and children honor and obey That's right. your parents. Now we have young Timothy as a young person mm -hmm. hanging out with Paul who was pretty old. And here's Paul's words. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved right. unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. If you have some free time, study to show thyself approved unto God. That's right. If you got other things to do, well, I urge you, instead of doing those other things, study to show yourself approved to God. 
Yeah. But that, notice it says, approved unto God. This is very similar to what it says in Colossians 3.20, Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Well-pleasing. Now, in the spiritual world, there are children and fathers. There are fathers here in this congregation. Mm-hmm. As spiritual children, we listen to our fathers. And the fathers are there to admonish and nurture and raise the children in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Paul said there's not many fathers. Well, if you can recognize someone who is a spiritual father, then you want to honor and respect and obey them. Mm-hmm. And this is off topic a little bit, but in when the, in the way the church is set up, there are set up people who are recognized by God and by the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Ghost uh-huh. and full of the Word of God, who are elders. And we're supposed to follow their faith. Yes, follow their faith. As a young person, if you can recognize those people who are spiritual fathers, I encourage you to give them the same honor and respect. Mm-hmm. Here's another admonition from the Apostle Paul. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, yes, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace yeah. with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Yeah. If you can listen to and follow this verse right here, it'll save you from a world of hurt. Amen. That's right. Flee youthful lusts. Mm-hmm. I wish I had done that one as a child. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it as an adult, but Mm -hmm. think how my life would be different. But if you want to serve the Lord out of a pure heart, in righteousness, faith, charity, and peace, here's what I have to say to you. Let no man despise thy youth. Now, Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 16. He was going to send Timothy to them. Well, uh, as you know, the people in Corinth were pretty contentious. And he told them that if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear. For he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Mm-hmm. Let no man therefore despise him. 1 right. Corinthians 16, 10 and 11. So if you see a young person who is serving the Lord, don't despise him. It would be an encouragement. Amen. Jesus said, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. If there's a, a young person who's serving the Lord, be an encouragement to them. Yes. Don't despise them. Amen. They have something very valuable to offer. And you might say, well, they could do it better. Or don't despise a young person who's serving the Lord. Mm-hmm. It says that a young person can be an example of the believers. That's a, That's right. a pattern Good works. A type, someone that someone else can follow. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be a follower of other people. You can be a leader of other people as a young person. Yes. Amen. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, Paul says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. If you see someone who's godly, Follow their example. It doesn't matter how old they are. If they're a young person and they're following the Lord, follow their example. And young people, be an example for other people. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Mm -hmm. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. In 1 Peter, Peter's talking to those people who are fathers in the faith, the elders, he says, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Yeah. Amen. The 
Fathers in the faith are to be examples right. to everyone else. A young person can aspire to be an elder. That's, right. uh -huh. That's a good desire to have. And if you're young and you have that desire, you pursue that desire to serve the Lord and be an example to other people. It says to be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. If you have been given an opportunity for ministry, just like Paul told Timothy, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Yes, Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If you've been given a ministry, mm -hmm. I urge you to fulfill it. Amen. You can do that as a young person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait till you're older. That's right. People will say, well, this is a promising person. We'll send them off to college and they'll learn how to uh, let's th rethink that. Why don't we start now when they're a young person, That's right. raise them up in the, in the fellowship, in the congregation, mm -hmm. through the participation. You can learn more than your teachers and yeah. have more understanding than the doctors. And how do you learn to preach? You start when you're young. Mm -hmm. I encourage that. Amen. It says to be an example of the believers in word, in conversation. Yeah. The conversation is not, well, of course, you want to not say ungodly things and uh, mm -hmm. to not participate in coarse jesting and, yes. and uh, mocking and scoffing and things like that. But the, this is talking about the way you live your life, That's your right. behavior. Mm -hmm. Other people can watch and see how you live. And if, if a person has uh, hidden things in their life, mm -hmm. eventually it comes out. You can't hide it forever. And you can hide it for a while. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're changed inside then that will come out too. Amen. And you can be an example to all the other believers. We have a conversation. Before a person becomes a Christian, they have, there's a conversation. The, the way you used to live. The old man. Mm -hmm. Scripture says it's full of deceitful lusts. Yeah. But now we have a new conversation, a new way of life. Yeah. Following Christ, who is our example. Following a pattern of good behavior, good works, charity towards all. James says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation the, his works with meekness of wisdom. As a young person, you can be a wise man. As a young person, you can be filled with the knowledge of God. As a young person, you can show your good conversation with your good works. The way you live First Peter chapter 2 verse 12 having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Yes. If you just purpose in your heart to be honest as a young person that will be such a blessing to you you can't imagine. If you allow falsehood and hypocrisy to creep in it's very hard to get those out. Mm -hmm. Praise God, Jesus Christ can. Amen. But if you can live with your way of life honest, well, that's the thing to think about. As a young person, you can, you can do that. 1 Peter 3.16, having a good conscience. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of enemies against you in this world. It seems like the entire, the entire world is out to steal your conscience, to steal your purity, yeah. to steal your faith, to make you just as corrupt as they are. Well, here's what I have to say. Let no man yeah. despise thy youth, Amen. but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Yes. 
As a young person, you can be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. You can let the Spirit of God control everything you do and everything you think and everything you say. Amen. If you start when you're young, it'll be much easier. Yeah. I can't tell you how to do that because I didn't do that. But I urge you, now I'm living by faith, following the Spirit of God. And you can, if you start to do that when you're young, yeah. just imagine how your life will end up yeah. as a blessing to God and to other people. Mm -hmm. It says to be an example in charity. Well, that would be talking about godly love. Also doing, of course, charitable deeds, you know, Jesus was the example of going, he went around doing good. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that are, uh, a lot of ministries that are set up to feed the poor, mm -hmm. to give clothing to people, to uh, provide housing. And those are all good things. But charity starts with the household of God. And charity is associated with, the, uh, with grace. It is, it's a, it's not just the love that people would say. The, it's a different type of love than what the world would say would define love as. It's, it's completely associated with the grace of God. Yeah. And there's a description of charity in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. I urge you, as a young person, to be an example to the brethren and to all people in charity. Jesus said, by this all men shall know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. John 13, 35. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. Continue. You can start that as a young person. You don't have to be old before you can follow Christ's example of love. As a young person... You can be filled with the Spirit of God. You can have that earnest desire to follow God no matter what it takes. You can be, you can be zealous for the Lord. Mm -hmm. you, can, can, you can control your spirit. You have a spirit inside you. And when, you, when you're born again, your spirit joins with the Spirit of God. But the, you can be a spiritual man as a young person. Yeah. Paul wrote to Timothy, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Talking about being filled with the Spirit, that's a qualification mm -hmm. for being an elder or a deacon. We read in uh, Acts 6 about those that were chosen to, uh, to serve the, the widows who were needing assistance. And one of the qualifications, they had to be full of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. As a young person, you can be of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and full of wisdom. We have plenty of examples in the Scripture and plenty of examples in life to follow. Mm -hmm. You can make a determination that God will give you the grace and the ability to be of honest report and full of wisdom. Then we have the, the scripture talks about Barnabas and Stephen both being full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. You can be an example to believers in how you live your life, yeah, in right. charity, in spirit, in, in faith. Yes, amen. We've had a number of sermons and lessons on faith. Basically, it's putting your complete trust in the hands of God yes. and following him. Believing that he's going to take care of you Amen. and trusting that Jesus Christ will save you from your sins and keep all the promises he's made to you. And as a young person, you can believe those and act on the, the belief. You can receive all of the blessings of God 
as a young person. You don't have to wait till you're old. Yeah. A couple of years ago, there was a renewal, and Brother Given spoke on the blessings of the gospel, the fullness of the blessing. I urge you all to listen to that. But if you can search out in the scriptures the blessings that we have in Christ, mm -hmm. because he died to take away our sins. Yes. He was buried in the tomb and he rose again. That's the core of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Everything else hinges on that. Amen. Of course, if you choose to live your life in a certain way financially and, uh, you know, take care of business, and uh, of course we have blessings of uh, sunshine and rain like we had today. Yeah. We have blessings of uh, food and shelter and raiment. But I'm talking about spiritual blessings yes. that will survive. This world is headed for a cataclysmic destruction. Yeah. And people will scoff and say, well, it hasn't happened yet, so it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm telling you, there are two or three things that are inevitable. Mm -hmm. One is, at some point, you're going to die. Yeah. And then it doesn't matter what you did in this life. If you didn't have faith in Christ and follow him in obedience, well, uh, I would not want to be in your shoes at the judgment. Right. The second thing is there's going to be a judgment. And Jesus Christ is the judge sitting on the throne, and he'll judge every man according to the books, whether their name is written in, their, mm -hmm. in the Lamb's Book of Life. You'll be judged on your works. And the third thing is the destruction of the world. And so if you're uh, focused on this world, mm -hmm. It's all going to burn up and it won't last. Yeah. We're looking for spiritual blessings that will go through all of those things yeah. and continue on through all eternity. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to wait to be old to live by faith. Yeah. And there are many examples in Scripture, and you can hear in the assembly the testimonies of people who have had uh, living by faith. Mm -hmm. I urge you to be an example of others yeah. in your faith. Yeah. And lastly, in be an example in purity. This is a clean living, chastity, a purity of life. If you have a clean conscience, I urge you to live your life in such a way that you keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to be able to. Uh, as, a, uh, as part of the human race, there's sin that entered into the world through Adam. Of your own accord, you can't keep your conscience clean. You're going to end up, if you're apart from Christ, you probably have a defiled conscience. But you can get it clean. But this world is full of all kinds of uh, immoral, disgusting things. The media, the entertainment, the educational system, business, advertising, it's all based on appeal to sin, appeal to flesh. You can't sell anything unless it involves uh, improper advertising. All these things are against you to try to make it so that you become unclean just like the rest of the world. But if you can maintain an innocent, innocent mind, that would be such a blessing to you, you can't imagine. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, Paul gives another admonition to Timothy. He says, 1 Timothy 5, 1, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Purity is the way of life, the way you treat people in the family of God. Amen. The fellow believers are a part of your family, and we treat them with all purity. There's no way you'll be able to do that without the power of God, living, uh, the Spirit of God living in you, the Word of God in your mind and in your heart. I leave you with this scripture. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. If you can control what goes into your mind mm -hmm. through your eyes and ears, and you can think on things that are true and honest and pure and holy and good, you can do that as a young person. You don't have to wait to be old to start right. yeah. thinking Amen. with the mind of Christ. Amen. Set your mind on things above where yeah. Christ is. Amen. That's how you live a life of purity. You start with the mind. Mm -hmm. You keep things out that shouldn't be in there, and if there are things that do get in there, you get it cleaned out. Amen. Jesus Christ can give you a clean conscience, and Jesus Christ can give you the power to do this. I'll, my encouragement to all the young people... Let no man despise thy youth, Amen. but be thou an example of the believers yes. in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. That was excellent. Um, it's a good word. See, this encouraging encouragement is uh, something the Holy Spirit enters into, right? You, you, when you use the scriptures and you encourage one another, you edify one another. See, well, what's the result? The Holy Spirit enters and we're built up where we actually are. And um, I, I appreciated this uh, message. Uh, Brother David said, young people can be giants in the kingdom of God. Yeah. See, it, w there, w there is no limitations. Remember he mentioned that too. There's no limitations on faith. If you believe, if you have faith and you enter into it, you'll be, the Lord will bless you. And he you gave several good examples in the scriptures, Samuel and, and Joel. See, there's, there's, these things, there's these examples. Why? So that we'll trust that, we, that if you just do it, if you put your hand to the plow, the Lord will bless it. I appreciated that. <clears throat> we're in training. I like this. We're in training when we're taught to honor our parents so that when we grow up, we'll honor our heavenly father. See, you have a parent, one you can see with your eyes, one that tells you to do things. And as you do it as you honor them and do what they say. You see, God's given us this relationship so we can understand the greater relationship. And he'll bless you. Now, that's a promise. That's a commandment with promise, right? Well, that's good. So uh, I appreciated this exhortation that Brother David gave us. Let us all be an example let everyone be, see, we're not just the examples to the children, although we are. We're examples to one another, right? In, in verity, right? In, in doing the right thing. And in, in, in other words, you're showing that you can do the right thing. See, we don't have to sin, right? I mean, that does have to be said. We don't have to sin. I know people will say, well, you're going to eventually... That's not how you present it. You don't have to sin. That's what Paul said. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that's the truth. Yes. So see, when I, if I do sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate. But see, you didn't have to do it. And this is growing up in the crisis. Realize I don't have to do that. Well, I can remember when this dawned on my spirit. This helped me so much to see that God's given us a provision to where we can please him. We don't have to turn aside and do the, the, the things the flesh wants to do. We can crucify the flesh. So see, that doesn't work. But see, as a child, they need to be trained up, right? They need to be taught this. That they don't have, they will have inclinations. We all have inclinations because we got this body, but you can crucify him because he's given us of his spirit. I thank God for that provision. We, we can live a life that's pleasing to God. And this, so the fathers, we're 
Be good examples. I like that exhortation. Be good examples. Be, be a father that they, they, your children can look at it and they can, they can grow up knowing that this is possible. This is what God's given us. Anyway, any comments from the brethren? Brother Justin. Yeah, I like this exhortation to the young people. It says, young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Yes. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity. Yes. I, 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 I was, that, that word greatly ministered. Mm -hmm. Gravity. That's, that's, that's a seriousness. Yes. About the doctrine. That's a sobriety of manners. That's mm -hmm. a... Uh, so, it's a solemn, it's a solemn way of of carrying yourself like in a dignified manner, and, and, and not not a joking or lighthearted. Or, mm -hmm. See, this is if this I believe if this word was heated in the day that we live in, this would shut down virtually every youth ministry that's in the church today. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. seriousness yeah. of a, and solemnness mm -hmm. of proclaiming the word of God and, mm -hmm. and teaching the things of God in a manner that's not lighthearted, mm -hmm. yeah, or 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 joking. Yeah, there's a lot of joking that goes on. If you're on Facebook, you'll see there's a lot of things that they call memes about the the, the doctrine that young people are teaching the things of God in a way that's joking and mm -hmm. not serious. And mm -hmm. this is a very good exhortation. Mm -hmm. to, to, to the young people to be to be serious about these things yeah. and to be grave about these mm -hmm. things. Yes, really good. Timothy, when he received the epistles, he mm -hmm. was probably 20, 30 years old. Uh-huh, yeah. But he was raised up in the Lord. And That's right. He was probably in his early or middle teens mm -hmm. when Paul comes through there. Yeah. And he, he saw what he was in. Then Timothy went with Paul and yes. missionary. <laughs> yes, amen. See, this yes. Young people in the church are grossly <laughs> neglected. Yeah, that's right. That's There's right. There's not enough expected of them. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. and, uh, mm -hmm. These examples that they gave of Josiah and so yeah. forth. Yeah, uh-huh. This is a point of concern concern with me. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. <coughs> mm hmm. I can remember when I, I was my my father preached at distance from home about seventy miles away. Mm hmm. And I went with him and I preached my first sermon when I was like it's between fourteen and fifteen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And. Uh, he took, he'd give me a little direction how to preach. But it's a full, it wasn't just a little, it was a full sermon. Uh huh, yeah. But he taught me. Yes. Yeah, there was a period of time when I rebelled and I mm -hmm. repented about it, but I can, I can see how that uh, children are too, <laughs> they have too much potential. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. as, as David said, uh, said here tonight mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. uh, yes amen anyway it's a it's a honey it's virtually unexplored yes amen uh, it's amen virtually unexplored that's right territory. yes and uh, it's more than teaching them just just to do things right and this sort of thing mm -hmm. and the, the parents teach that's right i knew this by experience my mother mm -hmm. taught me how to speak mm-hmm mm-hmm Mm -hmm. It taught me how to read scripture. Yes. And how to quote scripture. Yes. I didn't know what she was doing at the time, but uh -huh. I honored my parents. Yes. You know? and so they they taught me, and it's Amen. A rewarding work. Every parent who does this now, you'll reap a reward. Amen. Me. That's right. When you grow up, you thank God. That yes. You, you get them in this direction, so Amen. That they were forward. Yes. Just, just think of an average Christian mother or father uh -huh. sending their teenage child on a missionary trip that you didn't know if you were even ever going to see him again. Yeah. I mean, just imagine yeah. that that that, so that couldn't happen today. Yeah. At least it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> doesn't seem like uh -huh. it. But that's how alert Paul was. So yes. Preachers and teachers mm -hmm. are to be alert. Yes. For, I've tried to. Follow that in my ministry mm -hmm. and be alert to young people. Amen. 
and almost invariably, mm -hmm. your parents are the one that took them out. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That took them away from almost invariably. That's right. The yeah, that's right. And uh, I was encouraged yes. any any parents. Yeah. Can be a notable example in this respect. Amen. Amen. And, uh, Expect great things of your of your children. Yes. They have great capacity. Amen. Yes. I don't believe this. You'll, you'll see some of the parents will see their children are creative. Yes. They, they can do a lot of things. Yeah. So they can do them for God. Amen. Amen. But you know, I was I looked this up. What does it mean to honor your 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 father and mother? Well, the honor is to prize. Okay. To, it is to fix a value. How how valuable do you Think uh, when you think of your mother or father, what kind of value do you put on them? Yes, now, see that what honor them is by in, in, by implication is to revere them, to, yes, to, exactly. to have a, a great a great estimation of them, to where you to to where you'll put your confidence in them. See, a child is to is to revere their parents. Yeah, yeah. And children children are young, but I'm a child, and I'm you know I'm over eighty, but I'm still a child. Yes. That's there, right. There never was a time I quit honoring my father. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. I can remember. They were the Lord Jesus. He honored yes. his father all until all the Amen. Life. That's right. So, so that's something that continues. Yes. To, to honor and respect. Yes. That your days be long. That's, that's right. The first commandment with the promise. Amen. You, you know, and I can remember this. Um, I, I did, as a child, as in my teens, I did not appreciate because I could see what was going on and my dad wasn't a believer very then and I didn't appreciate what he did but I honored him as my father yeah. I appreciated him that he provided for the family and that we had food I saw you know that and yeah. and yet and so God God later when he repented and he see I was glad I did That's right. I was glad I did all the other children it's just a truth they they worked with him for a while they couldn't put up with it having to obey him and they left and i stayed with him for 22 years working with him well, not because he was the the greatest boss you know he, he, sometimes when it's family you can get but see he taught me things that i would have never learned anyplace else yeah. he trained me to be a, a craftsman well you know what that that paid off the rest of my life honoring him that God fulfilled the promise he gave yeah. he he blessed me and then and I I could transfer that I could see how anyway uh, I, I, I'll never regret honoring my 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 mother my father and um to this day my mother's still faithful even though she has Alzheimer's she doesn't know what's going on around her but she remembers the Lord yeah. 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 Timothy didn't have a believing father. That's right. But he honored him anyway. He honored. That's right. Amen. Sister Heather? Brother David also shared this verse from 1 Timothy 5. Rebuke not an elder, but treat him as a yeah. father. Yes. Amen. And you've been saying, um, I believe also applies to the elders in the church. Yes. To honor them. Amen. Well, there are some that are worthy of double honor, right? That's what it says. Labor in a word in the dark. Be yeah, because they, 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 they've given themselves to, it's like they're, they're addicted to the gospel. Yeah. You know, they're, they, and so they're of great worth. See, that's what they're saying. The, their value can't even be estimated how, 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 what, what they're valued. But someone that will lead you in, into understanding more about God, how could you estimate that value? Yeah, yeah today that. A person who is labors in the word and the doctrine, the doctrine is the teaching of it. Right, right. The word is ingested. Mm -hmm. These people aren't honored today. Yeah. No, no, not they, as they as it's should. Because yes. Because of an institutional yes. and yep. right the Pharisees, mm -hmm. they they labored in the word, mm -hmm. not in the not in the doctrine. But the, Jesus told him, you listen to what they say because they, they are telling you what the word is. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes. So anyway, if, it, if, you know, if you know people that are laboring in the word, that's mm -hmm. what they're noted for. Amen. 
Amen. You get to take a moment and give thanks for them and, and encourage them. Yes. In our society, they're not. Uh, they're mm-hmm. not. In, they're not encouraged very much. Yes. I appreciate Brother David uh, giving us this this word about the young. See, the, the young, like Brother Given said, for the most part, if you go see what the children's programs are, it's very, very watered down, as it were. Yeah. And, 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 and so, so we can encourage the youth. And we can do it on live stream, too. We can do it as much as we can. Wherever the Lord opens a door, we can encourage them. Well, I'm thankful for that. Good message. Mm-hmm. Amen. A- amen. Well, we have um, the meditation. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. You got your song? Uh, we'll, we'll have the meditation. The song for the meditation. Um, let's sing. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't remember the name of the song. It's uh, My Sins Are Blotted Out, I Know. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear you. My Sins Are Blotted Out, I Know. I can't remember the name of the song. Uh, oh, let's just sing this one, 116. Which one? Uh, Great Hymns. 116. Page number 116. Uh-huh. Oh, Sacred Head Now Wounded. Mm-hmm. He did not come to be served, but to serve. Jesus did not come to do his own will, but the will of him who sent him. 
From the time that Jesus came into the world, he was determined to do the will of the Father. He was constrained by his love for his Father, and his Father was well pleased with him. While he was here, he was straightened to do his will. He didn't even speak concerning himself, but God told him what to say and what to speak. And he obeyed his parents and submitted to them. And he honored his heavenly father. And the master was an epitome of a selfless man. And wherever selfishness exists, Jesus does not live there. When a person lives primarily for self-interest, there is no connection between that person and Christ. Christ himself was the embodiment of selfless interest mm -hmm. and an example of a proper focus. He forfeited, Jesus forfeited divine advantage to come and save us. And he submitted himself to the Father. And he took upon himself the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. And he had to grow and he had to learn. And his father was well pleased with him. And he was from his youth about his father's business, diligently preparing for his great commission that he would lay down his life and take it up again. The commission given to him of his father. And you see, his father was well pleased with him. And he fulfilled the scripture and he was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove and God spoke audibly from heaven. He said, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And he took upon himself our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses and he did many wonderful works so that. And, and so many that all the books in the world could not possibly contain them. And gathering strength, and the Father was with him, and the Father was well pleased with him. And he came to that garden, and he, fa was, he was faced with the reality of being separated from that father who was well pleased with him, and being made sin, and he was in agony. And he submitted to the father and said, and, and the father strengthened him. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And the father was well pleased with his son. And he was betrayed into the hands of sinful men. And he endured the trials of mocking and scourging. And the truth was put on trial. And God was well pleased with his son. And they rejected him. And they chose a murderer, rather, to be released to him, to them. And, and they condemned the prince of life to death. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the father was well pleased with the son. And they led him to Golgotha the place of the skull and there they crucified him and the sun did cease to shine and in that darkness God placed the sin of the entire world on his only begotten son and God laid the stripes on him and it pleased God to bruise him and by his stripes we are healed yeah. And God was well pleased with his son. And his son not only laid down his life, but he took it up again. Yeah. And he entered into heaven with his own blood. Well done, good and faithful servant. And God was well pleased with him. He was well pleased at that time to have all the fullness dwell in his son. And to set him high above all principality and power and dominion in heavenly places and put all things underneath his feet 
King of kings and Lord of lords, and for that end he came into the world. And as we gather around this table and remember him, just as Christ was fixed on his heavenly father, you see, we remember, we're, our attention here is fixed on the son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. And, his fa and, and the father is well pleased with him. And if we remember him, he'll be well pleased with us. Yes. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you showed us what it's like to submit yourself, to give yourself wholeheartedly, Lord, to the Father. Lord, help us to remember you and to give ourselves wholeheartedly to you. And we know, Lord, that all of our life is not enough to show you the gratitude that you deserve for the marvelous graciousness that you've showed toward us. Lord, we want to do more for you. You've done so much for us. Help us to remember you during this time. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Me to page 141 in Great Hills. Page 141.
agenda has our closing prayer. In God's word, there's many blessings for us given, but there are seven special ones in the book of Revelation. Tonight, I read you one. It says, and he saith unto me, write, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the lamb. Amen. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these blessings that you give us, mm -hmm. and we thank you for the blessings of the words that were spoken today mm -hmm. and the teaching and knowledge that you have given to us, not only in our minds but in our hearts, mm -hmm. that we may go forward and do your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister.